Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Today we're going to talk about um, bleeding disorders. Uh, this is one of the biggest uh, topics I think students need to get a good grasp on. For if you ever shadow the hematologist, you gotta what how do you remember this stuff, man? This is crazy, man. I can keep it straight. Yeah, that's true. Because they got a trick, man, and they never tell you. And I still have to give credit to Dr. Barone because he taught us this for uh, our medical boards. I want you to first of all split your brain into two. Okay? Into two. So you can understand what bleeding disorder is all about. If you're watching this video right now and you don't understand the clotting cascade and you don't understand the platelet plug cascade, please, please go back, click down here and go back to the Cloud and Cascade video so you can understand what I'm about to talk about right now. So, we're going to split our brain into two. And from now on to forever and ever and ever, it's going to be two brains, okay? On one side of our brain right here, it's going to be platelets. Platelets. Only platelets. On this side of the brain, coagulation factor dysfunction. That's all I want you to know for now. You split your brains into two, platelet problem, Clotting factors, coagulation factors, they are two different things. Remember, platelet make the hemo primary hemostatic plug, wait, wait, right? And these guys are going to make the fibrinogen into fibrin, and everything's going to come together. So let's start. Patients are going to come into the hospital and they're going to tell you they're bleeding. And you're going to be like, okay, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah, yeah, there's something because they think you know the answer. And now we're going to figure out by the end of this lecture. The first thing you have to understand is, is it a platelet problem? Or are they missing some coagulation factors? We don't know. So they're going to come in with this. On this side of the brain, this is the only part of the brain we are working with right now. Platelets. See? Platelets, coagulation factors. I try to draw a map of the brain. One part for cerebellum and the other part so we can be on the same page. They're going to come with superficial bleeding. That's the history. Doc, I noticed I have these little, little dots on my skin. They call them petechia. Petechia. Or they might have something called ecchymosis. Or a purpura. From now on till thy kingdom come. Anytime you hear purpura, ecchymosis. Petechia. Always think platelets. Petechia, it's going to be in your board. It's going to say, oh, it has some petechia leaky lesion. A palpable purpura. You're like, palpable and purpura? It sounds like something like it's done with the platelets. Always remember that. Meningococcosemia, sepsis, DIC. We're going to talk about that. Platelets, platelets. Petechia. Echimosis. Petechia is tiny little dot hemorrhages. You see on the, like, under the skin, tiny little dot. If it gets a little wider, it becomes an ecchymosis. It's kind of a spread, okay? And purpura, it's more even widespread, okay? Look the picture up on Google and you'll see it. That will give you a idea of picture, okay? Because when you see a patient, like, oh, yeah, I might have a problem. Or they will say, Doc, you know, my nose is bleeding. I have nose bleeds. You don't know if it's a blood problem. You don't know if it's a coagulation problem. We're about to find out. What you was tell you, Doc, my menses is ridiculous. I'm bleeding like crazy, menorrhagia. That's all mucous membrane, okay? Endothelial bleeding. Skin, mucus, skin. Palpable purpura, ecchymosis, petechia, menorrhagia, nosebleeds, right? So when they come to your doctor's office, internal medicine, you're like, you know, what do I order first? Since you're thinking platelet, the first order is what? Get a CBC. When you get a CBC, which is a complete blood count, He'll give you the platelet count. You want to know what their platelet count is. Way back in the days, you know how they used to know um, if you have a platelet problem? We use something called the bleeding time. Do you know what the bleeding time is? It's the time it takes you for you to bleed until you stop. <laughs> I think that is crazy, right? Like, I'll cut you. Let me see how long it takes you for you to bleed. Okay? Uh, actually, it's not cool because the way they test it, they'll take blades put it on a, a scale and it's snake your skin and, start to, and they start to time. Hmm, let me see how long it takes you to bleed. 
I don't think any of you guys will. I'm not sure they, they're not gonna do that on me for sure. No way. Okay. So when you hear bleeding time, I always think a play problem. Now we're gonna take our brains, our little big brain, and split it into two. There's two things that can happen. I can actually have low platelets, which the terminology in medicine is called what? Thrombo, right? So we're gonna split this into two now. I can have low platelets, which we call thrombocytopenia. Did you see that? Low platelet. Let's see, what can cause low platelets? Mm, a lot of things can cause low platelets, right? But what I want you to know, there's two, three, there's three things in medicine that's always like there. They will test you on your bed, boards, you're gonna be like, oh, good, not again. Is remember these three things. The first one is ITP. Idiopathic, which means we don't know what causes it. Thrombocytopenia. Two, TTP. Thrombotic, thrombocytopenia. We're gonna, I'm not gonna talk about the pathogenesis of this disease because that's a whole lecture on its own. And the third one, HUS. Hemolytic uremic syndrome. This is a classic three thrombocytopenic syndromes you need to come into memory. This is extremely important. But every time you see low platelet, so which means if their platelet is low, what you expect the bleeding time to be. If I don't have any platelet to remember the EMS to come to the spot because they're low, I'm going to be bleeding a lot. I mean, bleeding time will be extremely high. Right? Remember those three things. Keep that into memory for now. Another thing that can also cause low platelets is HIP. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia is basically you're making antibodies against platelets and heparin, which also consumes your platelets. Which I'm not really going to go into details because that's another lecture in tone, but remember these four things because we're going to talk about their pathology and the pathophysiology later on down the line. However, actually, I might have platelets and they might not be working. Can you believe that? We can actually have normal platelet count. And by the way, what is a normal platelet count? It's between 150 to 400,000 uh, ml uh, cubic millimeters. Just remember that number. You have to know that eventually, okay? Actually, I can have a normal platelet, but they're not working. How can that be possible? I have platelets, but they're not working. Let's see, how can that happen? A patient on aspirin. How does aspirin work? Ah, oh, let's show you. Remember the arachidonic acid? Aspirin is gonna block cyclooxygenase one and two, which means I can make what? Thromboxin A2. Remember the last lecture, thromboxin A2 does what? Platelet aggregation. If the patient can come together, and worth it. So I do have normal platelets, which means what's going to happen to my bleeding time? It's going to be high, not because I don't have platelets. It's because the platelets are there, but they're just not working. Right? There's nobody to spread the perfume to attract them to come. I know the reason I can actually have normal platelets, and they're not working, is this. Uremia. Uremia. Classic. A 40-year-old diabetic patient on, you know, hasn't gone to dialysis for so long. He can't exceed all those BUN, I mean the urea out of their body. The urea actually comes and coats around the platelets. So if you coat the platelets, the antibodies can stick out and stick to each other. So everybody's just playing around and have normal platelets. However, they're not working. They can't stick together. None of those glycoproteins are working at that point. Know that. See how easy this is? So I can actually have low platelets. My bleeding, I'm bleeding a lot, having all the syndromes. Or I can have normal platelets. However, they're not clotting. Now, we can have genetic disorders. There are three genetic disorders you have to know. And actually, we're going to go over them. And if you don't remember what I told you, always remember, go back 
And if you listen to this lecture, always go back to Cloud and Cascade to understand. The first one is Banner Sulea. Very rare disease. I don't even think I've seen my lifetime. Which is a glycoprotein 1B deficiency. Glycoprotein 1B, remember, is needed for you to bind to all those von Willebrand. So if there's no glycoprotein 1B, von Willebrand will just be staying there and you're still going to be bleeding. Okay? How do I remember Bennett Sulia? Bennett start with what? I like this guy. It start with a B. So it's going to be glycoprotein 1B. Remember, I still have normal platelets. The platelets are normal. The, the problem, problem is they can't bind. And number two is Glanzman thrombocytopenia. Right? Glanzman is going to be a deficiency in glycoprotein 2B, 3A. That's the same glycoprotein. Remember that glycoprotein I told you about that needs to cause platelet aggregation? If they're not there, they can produce it. If you have a deficiency, remember, if the places cannot come together, you're still going to keep bleeding. You need those two in between the fibrinogen to hold them together. And if they're not there, oops, I'm still... But look at it. My platelet count is still normal. But what's going to have a bleeding time? It's going to be high because I'm going to keep bleeding because there's no platelet to stick to each other. Another problem could be what? I can have normal platelets. But how about this? Von Willebrand factor is on vacation. This patient is going to come in with mucous membrane. It's a classic board question. They're going to tell you it's nosebleed. They have a petechia. They have a menorrhagia. Right? A 19 or 15 year old girl is having these problems. Von Willebrand factor. And we're going to talk about the clinical significance and the pathology later. But this is what you got to remember. Von Willy, Von, if there's no Von Willebrand, remember those Von Willebrand? You need those glycoprotein 1B to bind to Von Willebrand. If they're not there, you're going to still bleed. See how easy this is? So if you commit this to memory, so just a brief summary, we are still working on the right side of our brain. Right? Is this. Superficial bleeding. Think platelet. Petechia. Ecchymosis. Palpable purpura. Right? Nosebleeds, menorrhagia, order CBC stat. Look at the platelet count. Is the platelet count normal or is it low? If it's low, go into this little, little extra pathway ITP, TTP, HUS, and HIT. They might be on heparin. Remember, if the patient is on heparin, oh, we got a problem. Or is the patient platelet normal? If it's normal, it's either, are they on aspirin? If they're on aspirin, bam, we give you the answer. Are they on dialysis? And you haven't had dialysis in a while, they're diabetic, they got uremia. Do they have venous cilia? Very rare. Glanzman thrombocytopenia? Very rare. Von Willebrand factor deficiency. But what? It's going to be different about Von Willebrand is this. So, this is just Von Willebrand, okay? Von Willebrand's disease. What is the platelet count? Normal, right? The platelets are normal, right? What is the bleeding time? It should be high, right? Why? Because there is no platelets to bind to, von there's no Von Willebrand factor to bind to, remember? However, Remember, Von Willebrand is the husband, and factor eight is the lady. If Von Willebrand is not around, we're going to be missing factor eight. Remember, factor eight is that guy I told you right there that's converting factor nine into factor ten in the intrinsic pathway, right? So if there's no factor eight, what would you expect the PTT to be? Elevated. That's why people with Von Willebrand factor high PTT. How about the PT? Will it be normal, abnormal, low, or high? It should be normal. It's PT. Remember, PT is dependent on the extrinsic. We're going to war, right? It's 1972 cofactors. It has nothing to do with the, this cute little mnemonic I gave you, 11, 
9, 10, 2, 1, right, 7. This is where 8 is and this is where 5 is. This is the guy that's missing. Factor 8. So this guy is going to be PTT, is going to be high. So when you order a CBC, you should expect platelet count to be normal. However, PTT should be high. They're bleeding because bleeding time. But we don't, we don't do bleeding time anymore. But this is a classic board question. This is the way it is, okay? And we are done. It's over. Platelets. 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 Let's switch our brains. Let's lock that and go to the left-hand side of our brains. We are going to coagulation factors. This is coagulation factors, not platelets. Not platelets. This is coagulation factors, okay? Coagulation factors are the factors I just wrote on the board. These fellas. 12, 11, 9, 10, 2, 1, 7, right? With a little bit of factor 8 and a little bit of factor 5 here. This, all these bad boys have the coagulation factors. What's the point in life? Their point is to convert fibrinogen into fibrin. Make a nice static plug. If one of these guys is missing, one, this reaction is not going to happen. It's not going to happen, right? Everybody came to the party except this guy. Mm, forget it. The party is not going to go on. So this is what we're talking about here. How is the patient going to present? The patient is going to come to the hospital, right? They're going to have deep bleed. It's going to be deep in the tissues. I want you to sing along with me. Hematoma, hematrosis, coagulopathy. Hematoma, hematrosis, coagulopathy. Hematoma, hematrosis, coagulopathy. Hematoma, 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 hematrosis, hematrosis, hematrosis. Bleeding in the joints, bleeding in the joint, hematoma, bleeding in the tissues, hematoma. It's gonna be on your boards. They're gonna write it there. The guy is bleeding in his joints, right? Any little thing they hit, they're bleeding. They hit, they're bleeding. Why are they bleeding? Hematoma, hematrosis. They just don't throw what's around. That's the reason. You hear that word? You're like, I'm not a singer, okay? That's not the point. What do you order? I want to order a stat CBC. I'll check the platelets too. Because I don't know where it's coming from. But I want to see what that PT and their PTT looks like. So they're going to have patients with easy bleeding. The funny thing is this guy also have easy bleeding because they're scratching nose and they're bleeding. They have menorrhagic, they're bleeding. But these guys have easy bleeding. But what makes these guys different is the hematoma, hematrosis, coagulopathy. So, I order a PTT and a PT, and the first thing I think of is going to be like this. The first disease, hemophilia. It does not have the word in it. Hemo, hemophilia. Hemophilia is a factor 8 deficiency. That means if factor 8 is missing, this guy right here. So let's think about it. Factor 8 is missing. What would the platelet count? No more. It has nothing to do with platelets. This is platelets. What is bleeding time? It's going to be what? It's going to be high a little bit. Why? Because they're not clotting well. It's actually going to be normal a little bit. But if you touch them, they're going to bleed. What are you going to expect the PTT, PTT to be? The PTT, PTT, it's going to be high. Because factor 8 is missing. What you think is going to be the PT, PT is going to be normal. Right? So factor 8 is going to cause what? A high PTT. A platelet count is going to be normal. And bleeding time is going to be normal because what will happen is the platelet are going to still gonna be able to stick together, right? Except you have Von Willebrand missing. The platelet is still going to be able to stick to Von Willebrand. They're going to do their thing. But you know what? We can't coagulate. Another disease is what? Hemophilia this is called hemophilia A. It's hemophilia B. Factor 9 deficiency. We're back to the same story. Factor 9 is missing. We can't feel this. Right? 
And there's also a hemophilia C, which is factor 11. Can you see? This is usually in Jews. And it's always males. Don't mess that that wrong. They will always tell a male that's having bleeding in their joints, always bleeding in their in their arms and their legs. Easy bruising. Every time they jump, air, they hit something, they're blue breathing. Check for factor eight deficiency. And how do we treat it? Oh, we give them factor eight back. I like that. You give them factor eight back. Okay? So that's the three things I want you to first remember. Another thing that you should be worried about is vitamin K deficiency. Right? If somebody doesn't have vitamin K, which I told you is needed to activate factor 1972, 9, 7, 10, 2, right? How can we not have vitamin K? Usually a kid, a newborn that's baby, that's born, has no vitamin K in their gut. There's no E. coli. They need E. coli to make vitamin K for us, right? At least we get benefit. They're just not sitting in our poop, not doing anything, right? So we give them vitamin, vitamin K shot. Right? How can we not, if you're not eating enough vitamin K, you're going to be deficient. Also, if you're warfarin, right? If you're warfarin, what will happen is actually what they don't tell you is, although we always say PT is going to be high or INR, which is true because 9, 9, 10, 7, and 2 is missing, but think about 9. 9 is on the what? PTT pathway. So PTT is also slightly high. We just don't talk about it. Because it's slightly high, but it's not as high as PT, PT, prothrombin time. Because this is the prothrombin time. Okay? So, but, you know, that's just a little extra information, but the bottom line is PT is going to be prolonged. What about if you're heparin? If you're heparin, you're going to inhibit 12, 11, 9, and 10 by actin antitobin 3, so obviously PTT is going to be what? Extremely high. Tell me one more thing we need to finish this lecture with to actually understand coagulopathy. Well, I don't even know why we're talking if so, the guy that actually gives us all these cool factors is not alive. It's like a parent without, a, you know, a, kid, a, a little dog without a father is just roaming him lessly around, right? You know, there's nobody to provide food for him. If the liver is dead, liver cirrhosis, right? If you listen to the liver function test lecture that I made, you will realize one of the most important things the liver does is what? Make vitamin K and makes all these cofactors that tell factor A. So if the liver is gone and it's not working, you're going to be bleeding. You check the PT, very hot. Also, you don't have albumin also. But the problem is if you have liver problem. automatically you will actually bleed. This has bring, brought us to the end of this lecture. This is how hematologists think. They make medical students, nursing students, they make them look idiots. But this is how they think. And you're sitting there like, oh my god, I, I can't figure this out, it's too much stuff. But this is it. Summary. Bleeding disorders, Platelets, coagulation factors. Platelets, coagulation factors. Your left and your right, right and left side of your brain. Okay. Platelet problem, superficial bleed. Okay. Then you have hematoma. I'm sorry. Ecchymosis, purpura, and you have petechia. Nose bleeds, menorrhagia. Okay. Labs, your other platelet count is it low? If it's low, think ITP, TTP, HUS, HIT. If they're normal, think they're aspirin. They have uremia or they have benzodiazepine glands, man, or vial von Willebrand. You're done. Suit your brain. Coagulation factors. Think hematoma, hematrosis, coagulopathy. Okay? Then you look at the class cascade, which you already memorized, and you start picking and choosing what you want. Hemophilia, factor A is out. Okay? It's usually in males. Remember that. Factor 9. Factor, uh, factor 9 and factor 11. B and C. Okay? Vitamin K deficiency. Okay? Think about it. You're not going to have enough vitamin K to make all these core factors active. PT is hot. Liver problems, okay? PTT is still going to be high, okay? And that is it. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to my videos uh, and also visit our website, ftpinc.org. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. Take it easy. God bless.